ever dream of growing your own vegetables? If so, you'll probably think you need a garden and lots of sunshine. Think again. A German company grows produce indoors using artificial light rather than sunlight and a special substrate rather than soil. But is this method sustainable? Doesn't it consume huge amounts of electricity? And is the produce even good enough for you? We went to the city of Hamburg to find out. Fresh lettuce seedlings needing just some light and sufficient heat to get growing. And they get both as well as plenty of space in this vertical farm. 18 hours of light per day and a constant temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, matured lettuce is being harvested at the other end of the farmhouse. It takes 21 days, it's complete, and then height and everything is complete. We check the key parameters, light intensity, nutrient density and the quantity of water, plus the time they spend in the cell at the farm. The company harvests 120 kilos of lettuce per day in its converted warehouse in central Hamburg, all year round, regardless of the weather. The image of the cheery old farmer is outdated. It's all industrialized today. Companies have been growing lettuces in greenhouses for 40 years now, and there's no alternative when it comes to supplying the mass market at low prices. This company goes a step or two further than conventional greenhouses. Nothing is left to chance here. The seeds are disinfected before being planted to exterminate any germs. Yeah, fungi is uh, bad because it sucks out all the nutrients from plants and eventually it kills the plants. Strictly controlled artificial lighting. It's a complicated and expensive setup. The space, light quantity and nutrients have to be calculated precisely. Ten canteens and restaurants in Hamburg now order their lettuce from the indoor farm. It costs between 9 and 12 euros per kilo, a third more than produced from southern Spain or Morocco. Customers were initially sceptical, says restaurant chef Benjamin Bruning, but they're paying for a superior product, he adds. With no refrigerated transportation, the plants retain their natural flavour. At first, it was really hard for us to get people to try the lettuce. We told them this is a pretty far-out concept and genuinely different. It's a system you've not seen before. The company grants only limited access to production, also because it's come under criticism for the high energy consumption involved. The LED lighting means a kilo of lettuce needs six or seven kilowatts of power until ready for harvest. But the management defends its emissions record. Compare this to a greenhouse. The sun may be free of charge, but you also need a cooling system for the roots and the water. So the overall energy consumption for greenhouse production is also very high. But the critics overlook that. Here the energy factor is obvious because the LED lighting is so conspicuous. A number of countries in the Middle East have also shown interest. The region's climate is particularly unfavorable for growing lettuce, pushing up costs for watering and cooling, so indoor vegetables could have a very big future in these climate zones. As the Earth's population grows, it's solutions like this that we'll need to be able to provide enough food to people in cities. Another critical issue we've reported on is the loss of biodiversity. But there are species that have successfully managed to adapt and survive despite changes to their environment. Did you know, for instance, that some sea turtles have been around since the age of the dinosaurs? Yes, Felicia, that's very true. Which is why it's crazy that most species of sea turtles are now endangered. Some are poached for their meat and shells, while others are affected by the pollution. The island of Réunion, which is on the Indian Sea, east of Madagascar, is a habitat for sea turtles. A conservation centre on that island is working to see that they are protected. And believe it or not, they are already having some success. The warm, clear waters of Réunion, 
a tropical island in the Indian Ocean where you can find various species of sea turtle. There are seven species in all worldwide, and five of them are endangered. But here, conservationists are working hard to protect the reptiles. Claire Jean is a scientist at the Colonia Turtle Rehabilitation Center. She and her colleagues take care of sick and injured animals. In Colonia, you may find three, uh, four species of the five that we encounter in the Indian Ocean. So uh, the most common is the green turtles. We have also the Hogsville, Loggerhead, and the Olive Ridley. Uh, most of the turtles are coming from the wild as they are rehabilitated. 30 turtles each year that are brought back by fishermen or uh, people that go on the sea and just find an uh, injured turtle or, or a sick turtle. Many of the turtles at the center have been injured by fishing hooks or have swallowed them. The hooks have to be removed. This time, it's a straightforward operation. But the center does much more than just help injured turtles recover. It also tracks their migration patterns with the help of devices attached to the animal's shells. The tagging process doesn't hurt the turtles and provides useful information on their habits. Sharing the knowledge they gain is another of the researchers' goals. Last year alone, the center helped educate over 15,000 local children with in-house visits and outreach education programs. I think uh, one of the keys for conservation is uh, children, is our, they are our future. Uh, by involving uh, children in sea turtles uh, conservation, it's also a good way, I think, for conservation sustainability. Without support from the area, the Turtle Center would be much less effective. So Colonia collaborates with locals, some as far afield as the neighboring islands of Madagascar and Comoros. On Madagascar, sea turtles have traditionally been viewed as a food source. Now people here are paid to help them survive. Poachers uh, become nest surveyor. So they have to, to look for a nest, and for each baby that hatch, they get money. They get the same uh, amount of money as if they, they had uh, sold the nest. And the conservation measures seem to be working. Recent data indicates that turtle populations in Réunion have flourished in the last decade. That's good news, but the researchers at Colonia say there's still a long way to go. Comparing to other regions of the Indian Ocean, it's still a very small population and we are not sure that it will be stable if we stop all the conservation. The turtles that hatch here don't necessarily remain in the vicinity of the island. The animals are great travelers. If turtle populations thrive here, that has a positive impact on conservation efforts for the whole region. Our activities as human beings can often cause beauty and fun, but many times our activities cause pain, especially for the environment. And that's the cry of a young fine and applied arts graduate, Stanley Aneto, here in Lagos, who's decided to use his passion for creating beauty and fun to remind humanity about the need to care for the environment. He decided to use music, to use his art in, term, in the form of photography and paintings to remind us again how Mother Earth needs to be cared for. The more we cut the trees, the hotter it will be. He is a singer you really need to listen to. Nigerian artist Stanley Aneto has written songs and poems to encourage more people to look after the environment. His songs focus on water and drought, the felling of trees, air pollution and the loss of Africa's animal population. Climate change, um, environment protection and um, you know, all those things I'm into are not things that are well um, celebrated here because um, the average person in this part of the world is more interested in survival. One of his songs has earned him an award. 
But even if people enjoy his music, they're not so sure about his message. People think I'm um, from the Mars. What are you talking about? If water can't go, now what thing we go do? Like seriously, there's always rain. And even if it doesn't rain, it's, we just pray and God is going to release it. <laughs> the earth and animals sketched with a reflective pen. When it comes to environmental protection, Stanley sets an example, his way. Instead of brushes, he uses different colored light bulbs. Lights out and the magic begins. Earth's transition from green and healthy to the alarming state that it's in today, captured through the lens of a camera. Usually, a painting done with oil or acrylic on canvas should take a couple of hours to a few days, depending on the size, and there'll be considerable waste. This is done in just a few minutes, and there's no waste. When you use things like oil paint, you still dispose the tube at the end of the day, they all end up in the environment. You know? So this helps us manage our creative tools without impacting in our environment negatively. That's it. it gives us the appeal that we expect to get from art. This isn't how Stanley used to work. A graduate of fine and applied arts, he painted like regular artists, with oil or acrylic on canvas. He's made over 300 pieces using this new method and now sells multiple copies of each piece around the world. The truth about it is that we've abused the environment so much that I mean, our environment is fighting us back. When I, when I, mean, when I, when I say environment, I mean nature. In nature, the entire circle is tipping the balance. Waters are dragging faster, cause the world is getting hotter. It's a shame the way to blame. Stanley Aneto wants the rest of the world to pay more attention to the environment. He believes in the power of music to bring about change. If you don't accept what I'm saying, you accept the way I'm saying it. Some people listen to my music and they just dance to it or they just listen to the melody. But it, there's no way you can swallow a pill. That's why I say I encapsulate it, I put entertainment over my message. You know, so I make it so irresistible. You, you just have to listen to it. And get the message. Stanley Aneto is recording new songs. Audiences love his music and it gets a lot of radio and TV airplay. Maybe one day people won't just listen, they'll take action too. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Eco at Africa. If you want to find out more about the topics we've covered, take a look at our website. My name is Felicia Endersby, and it's goodbye from me here in Johannesburg, South Africa. And my name's Neil Taigbe, and I'm signing off from Lagos, Nigeria. Don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of Eco at Africa, full of brand new ideas for society and environment. Bye-bye, and take care.